A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ had not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. 
If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man, rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening to all of you. I will be brief today. I would like to show you first the bishop's homily, and I am sure of your great response to the Our Catholic Appeal for the last few years since I have been your pastor, and I want to thank you for the great support. Today, like I mentioned to you last Sunday, I wanted you to bring the envelope or to mail it to the diocese. I hope you did one or the other. Or both, yes? <laughs> and if you forgot to do that, don't worry. I have news for you. What do you think is going to happen today? I'm going to give you another envelope. If you can, if you would like to help us. So the more that we participate, the better we get there. So let us listen to the bishop's homily. And it's about seven minutes or so. So we will be able to at least see him through the video or through the internet.
My sisters and brothers in Christ, trust in the Lord. These words are prayed and exclaimed, the anointing of each day, they are the praise of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fiat of Mary, our blessed mother, and her spouse, Joseph. They are St. Peter's cry to Jesus when he stumbles and walks on the water. As I travel throughout our nine counties and meet you, my heart rejoices as you have shown your faith in God. Your prayer of humility is trust in the Lord. Pope Francis said that being a good Christian means being docile, listening to what the Lord says about justice, charity, forgiveness, and mercy. Over the course of the last two years, you and I have learned much about trusting in God as we have experienced the pandemic. Trust in God requires earthly sacrifices and great prayer. The prophet Jeremiah says that anyone who trusts in the Lord is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress. The ministries supported by your generosity to our Catholic appeal are the roots of that tree. We're trying to get people to not only come to Mass, but to experience our Eucharistic Lord in a whole new way. For me to have the body of Christ, that is a privilege to me. So when I say amen to the body of Christ, that makes my soul happier. It's the most wonderful feeling to be able to come every day and to receive the Lord. In these uncertain times, our faith is the one thing we can always count on. Being able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and worship together as a community has been such a blessing for our family. I remember saying to myself, thank God, thank God that, that I was here when, when he crashed through the doors. It exploded mostly up the way and uh, it was like looking into a little bit of hell. The air conditioning was on at the time of the fire, so it dragged the smoke all over the building. The diocesan entities uh, that we helped from our Catholic appeal were here on the ground and they navigated this tremendous world of insurance and repairs. It's better than what it was. There's a spark to it that wasn't there before. Our relationship with Holy Redeemer in particular, that pantry is a work of art, <laughs> okay, a work of beauty. The floor is shining like it's hospital clean. We're given a mission, uh, whether you realize it or not, uh, and as Catholics and as Christians, uh, and this is the type of work that we should be doing. Nos sentimos muy felices y agradecidos de Dios y de ustedes. We were looking for something very centralized so that priests could have easy access to parishes in the area because many priests, of course, never really retire. We still celebrate sacraments and do confessions and, and visit the hospitals. San Pedro is going to give them a lot of opportunities, uh, for example, to be chaplains of retreats, to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation, to celebrate Mass. Just like my whole world crashed down and losing both parents in the same year. And when I let myself go, not showering, hardly eating, sleeping all the time. One morning I looked in the mirror and I said, I don't like the way you look. Either you know, you're going to stay that way or change, and I decided to change. And then when I got here, I was, I was kind of nervous. My case manager asked me what's wrong. They give you fresh sheets. Three meals, they're friendly and helpful, kind. God has something better for me. That's why I'm still here. I got a new start. The lady should know that this work of speaking up for Jesus, being Christ's mouthpiece, Christ's hands, Christ's leg, 
It's not just for priests and religious. Christ tells every lay person, baptized Christian, you shall be my witness. We want to be known as people who love Jesus. We want to be known as people who say yes to Jesus. Our faith only grows if we start giving it away. I would say what St. Francis said, it's in giving that you receive. And the more you give, I think the more you're going to receive. Ultimately, it's all about surrender. Trust in the Lord. I rejoice in your faithfulness. Today I thank you for your gift to our Catholic appeal. And I ask the Lord's blessing be upon you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. What a great experience, huh? To go through that. It is really uh, uplifting for all of us as Catholics that the Holy Spirit continues to guide our church even today. So that's a great thing to do. I would like to invite you now, if you brought your envelopes today, do not worry. You will relax for a few minutes. And uh, we're going to ask you in a few minutes to uh, bring those envelopes to the middle of the church. But for those of you who would like to take one home and talk to your account managers about a million dollars you are going to give to the Catholic Appeal, you can take it home with you. Uh, they look like this, they're blue. And anybody would like one, you can take it with you or do it at this time. We can give you right this moment uh, the envelope with the pen. The ushers, please come forward as we ask you to uh, get those who would like to do the, uh, also the pen. Do not use pencil, please, only pen. So we will not be able to erase it for you or anybody would not know who. So keep your hands up so we can uh, come to you and we'll bring you, we'll give you this opportunity to fill this uh, today. And if you cannot do it today, please bring it to us next Sunday or next Saturday. It is not a rush. We need you to do the best decision that you can do. And uh, we are not forcing anyone to give. There's more people over there. So uh, there are more people in here, Mr. John. To the front, John, okay? Keep your hands up so we will come to you. If you, can, uh, if you do not have a, a time right now, you can also take it as you go out today. And please remember to bring them to us by next Saturday, or you can mail it to the diocese directly. That it has the information already for you. So you don't have to bring it to us next Saturday or next Sunday. But send it directly to the bishop, but do not forget to put a stamp, please, on the right side of the envelope. And it's really easy to do. Uh, you have a few questions for you. The first thing we want you to do is to write your name clearly so we will be able to understand your name and to uh, be able to see it. If you have an envelope number, put it right there, 500. You know, guess which one is mine? One. <laughs> All the parcels are reserved one, and I help with, the, with my family also. There are more people in the front here who would like to have envelopes. Keep your hands up, please. So, so we, there is one in the. Oh, I'm sorry. If, if you got it in Spanish, we also have in English. Uh, uh, we have English ones too, Mr. John. Uh, uh, are they all Spanish? If the Spanish one, please raise them up. Yeah, we have a box of each. There are English. Return the Spanish ones. I'm sorry about that. I did not, I probably didn't separate them from. Who, who has a Spanish um, envelopes? Return them to us and we give you the English ones, okay? Uh, John, please bring the English envelopes. The English envelopes only. Okay, return them please to the, to the office. We need the English envelopes. Uh, John, please, we have some, this area here, I think they got Spanish. Anybody got Spanish envelopes? Uh, I'm sorry for that. So we need to, okay, if you do, Keep your hands up so we can help you with that. The English envelopes, they are the same color. That's what there is confusing because they are the same color. Last year, they were different colors, but okay. So those, those of you who have the envelopes now, you can start your homework is to fill your name in and, or your envelope number if you know the, the number. And you can give us whatever you can afford, whatever you can give to the diocese uh, for the bishop's appeal. It goes from 366, $1 a day, 
to 25,000. We give you all that option. Huh? So keep your hands up if you still need one envelope, the English envelopes. We have some in here. I think this is the part that only got Spanish. So, so please be aware of that. And they are coming up, so thank you for your patience. Uh, English envelopes only this time. Okay. Thank you. So we give you time to do it. Don't worry, okay? So there, there are some people in the front too who would like to get some envelopes uh, right here. Remember, you can use them today or bring them to us next Saturday or Sunday. The lady in the front too, she needs one too, the lady. Okay, anybody else? Keep your hands up so we will give you the envelopes. I'm sorry, there's one over here, uh, right there. Ja Mr. Okay, right there. Okay, anybody else needs an envelope today? We give you the time. There is one in the back there who needs an envelope. Um, Pam? There is a lady in the back there who needs an envelope. Just keep your hands up, please. Okay. We will give you two minutes to fill this up. Uh, you can put your name and the donation. Today you don't have to give anything. That's a good thing. But you can make a total pledge. Let's say you're going to give uh, $1 a day. That's $366 is the, la the last one, you put there 366. They say you're going to give 10,000, you put 10,000. That's a good one. We have some 10,000 places, by the way, some, uh, very few, but about 100 of them uh, throughout the whole diocese, though. And we also have uh, the option, so you can, if you're going to give any money today, you put it that, the amount, you can do it via check or cash. And the last one will be pending. If you are going to give, let's say, 1,000 and you give 100 today, it will be pending 900. And you can divide those 900 in three diff and four different payments. One, three, six, or 10. And they will be sending you that information to your house. So you don't have to do the addition today. If you would like to pay with a credit card, you just turn the page and you will find the credit card information. The number, your name, and the information on how much you would like us to take out every month. And remember, please, this is very safe. If for whatever reason something happens to you and your information is compromised, please call us directly. We will be very, very serious about that. We do not want your information to be compromised in our parish or in our diocese. Do you have more information? Anybody else needs more time? If you need more time, please raise your hand so we can give you another two or three minutes. Remember, take the envelope with you and bring it to us by next Saturday or Sunday. And if you're going to put a $20,000 donation, that's the best thing to do, you know. <laughs> we will give you the report of this appeal in the next three or four weeks. Any other questions at this time? Can you give bonds or stocks? Yes, some of you can do that. Uh, there is information here about that too. You can uh, give t stocks or bonds or whatever you have to donate to the diocese. There is always an option. And remember the, your last will to make it to St. Mary's or to the Diocese of Orlando. Thank you for your support. At this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to collect the envelopes only, without the baskets, because they might get confused with the baskets. Only the envelopes pass them through the center of the parish, of, this, of the pews, all the envelopes completed. If you would like to complete them at home, please take them home with you. Just pass them through the middle, to, to the left or to the right, wherever you are sitting, towards the middle. This side will be to the right, that side will be to the left. Pass them to the left or to the right. The check will be to our Catholic appeal. Our Catholic appeal. If you do it to St. Mary's, don't worry, we will send it also. You can also put cash, checks, or do it with credit cards. Any other questions today? I told you I was going to be brief. Ah. Okay, so we ask you to pass the envelopes. Everybody is ready to start now, to continue? Okay. So thank you for your great support. Next week and the following week, I will do a follow-up, and that will be the end of the, our Catholic appeal. As I told you last year, uh, we were number four in collecting the, our Catholic appeal in our deanery. So give yourselves a big hand for that. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. Okay? No. 